When I adapted my first lens just over two years ago, I had no idea that connection would evolve to this point. And what started out as a way to get back into photography has become an evolution in my professional career. And this lens is the symbol of that transformation. The perfect blending of my two favorite things, vintage lenses and cinematography. And inside this masterfully crafted housing beats the heart of a Soviet bear. Hi guys, my name is Mark, and uh, this is the Helios 44-2, as you've never seen it before. Completely repurposed and modernized for professional video. Now I'll get more into those specifics later, but first, I have to give full credit to the master crafters at Iron Glass Adapters and Vintage Lens for Video for joining forces to create a tool that completely changes the game. Normally, I don't bother with unboxings, but I'm gonna make an exception with this product. The unboxing itself is an actual experience and uh, one that I wanna share with you guys before I get into the details of the lens itself. If you want to skip, time codes are pinned in my comment just down below. Let's unbox this thing. Again. How a product is packaged really gives one the sense that whatever is inside is something special. And this product is no exception. The box this lens comes in is elegantly marked with a smooth textured black finish. Sure, you can keep it in your closet, but uh, it looks just as good on display just about anywhere. There's a little ribbon tab indicating where you open the box. Lifting that up, you'll feel the gentle resistance of a magnet that helps keep this lid nice and flush when closed. Details. We haven't even gotten to the lens yet. Inside the box, an iron glass gift card. 10% off. You'll also see a little note from the Iron Glass team, which I think goes a long way to remind you how personalized this process really is. A handwritten warranty card with all of the relevant purchasing details. And I love that they've included the name of the master crafter of this particular lens. Respect to the artists. There's also a nice Iron Glass branded lens cloth. I haven't opened it yet because I wanted to wait for this unboxing before I did. Obviously it's good for keeping the lens clean or for uh, wiping away tears. Uh, this experience will uh, surely bring. And last but not least is the lens itself. It's packed very securely inside the box and comes wrapped in this lens bag. Now, honestly, by this point I was pretty much blown away and the best was yet to come. A completely repurposed Helios 44-2 58mm f2.0. Now the biggest changes to this lens are definitely in the functionality of the body. The guts are more or less the same, which is kind of fitting. This lens formula has returned to its original motion picture roots after uh, so many years. Although the Helios 44-2 is a Soviet lens, its origins are German. Known as being a clone of the Carl Zeiss Biotar 58mm f2, the Biotar was originally developed as a cinema lens and was later adapted for the exact amount SLR system. When Germany fell at the end of World War II, it was split in two, with the Soviet army occupying Eastern Germany, where the Zeiss factory was located. As a result, the Russians obtained the Biotar formulas and blueprints, and the Helios 44-2 was born, one of the most mass-produced and popular lenses in the world. The housing itself is machined metal. I did mention it feels good, right? Because, damn, it feels good. But more important than that is the functionality it brings. 
The aperture of the Helios is made up of eight blades and ranges from F2 to F16. And the aperture scale is clearly marked and carved into the lens housing. The aperture ring has the industry standard gearing in case you want to control your aperture with a follow focus system. And the dampening of the gear is perfect. It's not too stiff, but also not too loose that it'll accidentally slip during a take. The lens has a 95 millimeter front and a 92 millimeter thread inside. This is standardized between the entire set. And this makes filter use and matte box fitting uniform between the lenses. It has a minimum focusing distance of 1.5 feet or 0.5 meters. And the focus ring also uses the industry standard gearing. It's got a full 270 degree focus throw. And the lens housing has very clearly marked distance measurements. You can actually customize these to your preference, imperial or metric when you order your lens. My lens has photo style markings, which are easier to read from behind the camera. And this lens was made back in January, and since then they've standardized the markings on the lenses in a more traditional cine style, which shifts the numbers 90 degrees, making them easier to read from beside the camera. The orange line here is your distance and aperture measurement line and is situated perfectly on the housing, making it easy for a camera assist or focus puller to clearly read the markings. When you order this lens, you have the option to choose either a dedicated PL or EF mount. Now, I opted for the PL mount so it would be more compatible with a wider array of higher end cameras. Now, iron glass adapters do offer a number of high quality adapters and I did pick up this PL to E mount adapter for my Sony. Now there are a few internal modifications you can make to this lens to suit your needs as well, such as anamorphic bokeh and anamorphic flares in both amber and blue tones. I've always sort of been partial to anamorphic bokeh, which renders the out of focus areas in a more oval shape. So I did opt for that option in this lens. It's important to mention that because this is a highly customized process and the lens you order is handmade per your specs, the lens is sourced, the parts are machined, anodized, and assembled. All this will take a bit of time for delivery of the finished lens. And the best part about that is you get a lens that is uniquely yours, handcrafted by skilled technicians and not mass produced on some assembly line, which I think is kind of cool. The offset, of course, of that is you'll have to exercise a bit of patience. Optically, it's no surprise the charm this lens exhibits. Well, that's the fundamental reason why I love it so much. And the 58 millimeter focal length is versatile. There really is nothing this lens can't shoot, or so it seems. And you can see the anamorphic bokeh on display in this shot here. And the housing functionality really makes rigging easy. I've been testing out the Tilta Nucleus Nano wireless follow focus with this lens, and it's been pretty fantastic. Special thanks to Patrick Tommaso for the extended loan on the follow focus to test it out. Now, I've worked with a few cinema lenses, especially the less expensive ones, where the focus gears are very stiff. These require a more powerful follow focus to properly engage the gears. This lens with the Nucleus Nano, butter. And like most vintage lenses wide open at f2, the center sharpness is decent but quickly dissipates toward the edges. For video, this is fine. I'm probably not gonna shoot at f2 on a full frame camera for much, except perhaps some very specifically motivated moments which can take full advantage of that lack of edge to edge sharpness. f2.8 gives a significantly better result but it's between f4 and f8 where this lens really gives the sharpest result. Swirly bokeh, this lens has it if you shoot within the right conditions. And it's definitely more prominent on a full frame camera versus a Super 35 or APS-C sensor. 
You need the right balance between your subject and your background to really maximize its effect. Now, I like that the swirly bulk isn't just present by default in every image. Sometimes you don't want it. But if you do, just dial in those settings and bam, it's like an on off switch. Flaring is something I've been digging quite a lot with this lens. And the housing design itself with this indent here helps control it on one level. And of course, there's additional flare protection offered by a matte box and other lighting or gripping tools. When I do get a flare out of this lens, it's 100% intentional and I've been experimenting quite a bit with it. So who is this lens for? I would say, without a doubt, this lens is a professional investment. One that in the long run should absolutely have the potential to generate revenue and pay for itself a number of times over. But it's probably not meant for the casual hobbyist looking for an affordable vintage lens with a lot of character. If that's the case, purchasing a secondhand Helios 44.2 would probably be much wiser use of funds, but uh, who am I to dictate how one should spend their money? Like in most things artistically driven, shooting professional video work with a vintage lens may not be a look you can appreciate, and that's totally fine. This lens might not be for you. But for those of you who do appreciate it, I honestly think this is one of the best options currently available on the market. Especially when you complete the Soviet set with the Mir 37 f2.8 and the Jupiter 85 f2. A vintage Soviet set ready for a modern production workflow could definitely be a valuable tool in your production kit. Priced modestly at $950, this lens feels a lot more expensive than it actually is. And I love the fact that you can customize a number of different aspects of it. And I love the fact that it's made to order. Most of all, I think I love the image it renders and the stories it will help me tell. I guess the better word for that is it's inspiring. This lens inspires me to shoot, and that alone, for me, is priceless. All right, guys, well, that's about it for this video. If anyone has any questions regarding this lens, please let me know, I'm happy to answer. If you're interested in these lenses, definitely go check out Iron Glass Adapters and Vintage Lens for Video, the real talent behind these lenses. They're part of a growing community who are doing so much for the vintage lens and professional video communities. I'm just a satisfied customer. Thanks as always for watching, stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time.